Welcome to this Michigan Region 8 MCA training in the Michigan EMS data system. Today's topic is Report Writer Basics. Report Writer is the tool that Image Trend Elite provides to run analytical or summary reports on the EMS data in the system. Here's our agenda for today. Uh, we'll first just uh, show how to access Report Writer. Then we'll find an existing predefined report that someone else has built and we'll run it. Uh, then we'll play around with modifying that report, making a few changes to it. Uh, finally, we'll just create our own report from scratch. And we'll wrap up with a discussion of uh, additional reports that may be useful for you to have as an MCA user in the Image Trend Elite system in Michigan. To access Report Writer, we'll first need to log into the Michigan Image Trend Elite system, or MyEMSYS. Um, if you go to uh, my-emsys.org slash elite, that will get you to the login page. If you'd like to follow along and get some practice today, uh, you can do that. You can just log in using your own account. I'm going to log in today with uh, an account that I have. My account is a little bit different than yours because I'm not an MCA user. Instead, I have access at the agency level to a handful of agencies uh, in Region 8. Once I've logged in, I can find the report writer by going to the Tools menu and then choosing Report Writer over on the far left side. Here's the report writer interface. Your interface will look just a little bit different than mine. You will not have the analytical tabular report or analytical chart report options. However, you will have these transactional report options. And in a few minutes, we're going to create a transactional report from scratch using one of these options. But first, let's look at reports that have already been created in the system by others and have been shared with everybody in the system. Over on the left-hand side is a menu of folders that contain various reports that have been created. The first section is called My Reports. Any reports that you create and save will show up in the My Reports section. In the middle is the Shared Reports section, and down at the bottom, the Image Trend Reports section. These are reports that have been created by others and have been shared with you or shared with everybody in the system. In particular, I'll point out the QAQI folder. There are a bunch of reports that I've created in the QAQI folder that have been shared with everyone. Since I am logged in as myself, they actually show up in the My Reports section for me, uh, but for you, they'll be in the Shared Reports QAQI folder. If I click on that folder, I'll see several uh, different reports uh, that have been created to cover various topics that may be of interest to you as an MCA. We're going to get some practice uh, just running reports. I'm going to take a look at the dispatch complaint report. As I hover over it, I can see that this report counts the number of PCRs by complaint reported by dispatch. So it's a pretty simple report that just tells me how many calls EMS has gone on for different types of dispatch complaints. Uh, a handy way that you can use to find reports on different topics is to use the search box up in the top. If I type in dispatch, then it will filter the list of reports uh, to those that have a title with the word dispatch in it. And here you can see the dispatch complaint report as an option there. To run a report, first I'll click on it. This brings up the report in the main window here. And this report has already been designed uh, to ask you for uh, some filter criteria. It's going to ask for a unit notified date range. So in other words, an incident date range that you want to run the report on. Uh, so you could fill in a date range and click uh, Generate Report, and that would run it. Uh, however, I have seen some significant performance issues in this system. and have uh, some potential workarounds for those issues. I found that if I uh, simply run this report with no filters at all, it could take a very long time to run, like several minutes, 
uh, even though I may only have access to a handful of agencies or a particular county or MCA, I may not have access to more than a few hundred or a few thousand records, and yet it will take several minutes to run this report if I don't apply any filter criteria. I have discovered that uh, if I can filter the report geographically uh, up front, uh, even though it really doesn't change what I have access to, it'll cause the report to run more quickly. So let's say, for example, I have access to several agencies in Region 8. If I run the report with no filters at all, it's going to limit the report results to only those agencies I have access to that are all in Region 8. And yet, it's going to essentially read through every record in the entire state to figure out if I have access to that record or not. So I can give it a help or a shortcut by telling it to only look for records in Region 8, since I know that's all it's going to get for me anyway. So I'm going to add a criteria um, to my report before I even run it for the first time. And again, this is going to help us to uh, improve how quickly the report runs. I'm going to add region. I'm adding it as a filter, so that means whenever I run the report, it'll ask me which region um, I want to uh, filter on. I'm going to click Generate Report again. And now in addition to a date range, it's also asking me for, uh, it, it renamed it agency level two, but it's the region. So I can say region is equal to uh, region eight. So that's all I have access to anyway, but by setting this filter up front, it causes the report to run more quickly. I'm also going to set uh, the date range to this year. And when I whittle down a date range like that, that also helps the report to run more quickly. So the combination of these two filters is going to make it so that this, this report uh, will take less than a minute to run. So with those uh, applied, I'll click Generate Report. Okay, here are the results for my report. So I have, uh, as I said, access to uh, a handful of agencies in Region 8. And this report is breaking those down by MCA and then listing the agencies within that MCA, uh, what type of service they provide. And then it has the breakdown of uh, dispatch complaints with how many patient care reports there have been for each one. For example, let's uh, head down to Marquette MCA. There are several agencies in Marquette MCA that I have access to, and it's listing in each of those agencies the different dispatch complaints and the number of calls they've gone on. So, for example, in Nagani Township, their most common dispatch complaint is an MVC or transportation incident. This can sometimes be used for uh, quality improvement. For example, uh, there is a dispatch complaint called No Other Appropriate Choice, and you can look in the various agencies and make sure that that's not being used frequently. You know, every once in a while, that's going to be what they'll have to pick. But if that's the most common dispatch complaint that they're picking, it could be that they're not really taking the time to look through the list of possible complaints and pick the one that's most appropriate. So here's an example for this agency. Uh, by far, the most common dispatch complaint is no other appropriate choice. Um, so that could be a potential quality improvement item for that agency to help their crews really uh, take a minute to pick the most appropriate dispatch complaint option from their list. Okay, so we ran this report. We got a list of dispatch complaints, how many calls for each one of those complaints. Uh, next, we're going to practice modifying this report. So this was a good start, but let's say that I wanted to add something else to this report. I want to add the average response time. So I want to know how long it took to get to the scene for each of these different dispatch complaints. Well, we can start with this existing report and just add in that additional piece of information. 
When you want additional information to display on your report, you're going to set it up using columns. This report has two columns right now, the dispatch complaint and the count of the PCRs. Let's go to columns and see if we can add average response time. You'll see that there's a very long list of, of things that I could add to the columns. And if I do add this information, let's uh, look, for example, at uh, unit notified by dispatch. You'll see there's a whole bunch of columns, data elements that I could add to columns that are related to unit notified by dispatch. In particular, there's one uh, here that's called unit notified by dispatch to unit arrived on scene in minutes. So that's how long it took from the time they were dispatched to the time they got on scene. If I were to add this element directly to my report as a column, what would happen is I would get one row of data in my report for each number of minutes that it took for units to respond. So it'd be a little weird. Um, I'd have incident complaint reported by dispatch, as you saw, and so we might have, for example, MVC slash transportation incident. And then I would have uh, response time in minutes, like one, two, three, you know, et cetera, however many different values there are. And then it would count the number of patient care reports that had that response time. So that may be useful, uh, but what I want to do is actually get an average of response time for each dispatch complaint. So I want each dispatch complaint just listed once and then tell me on average how long did it take to get there. Well, when you want to do a calculation like that, or something called an aggregation, you'll need to create a column. So I'll click the Create Column button. This is where I can create an average. Uh, there are other types of uh, aggregations I can do as well, like min, max, median, percentiles, etc. I'm going to call this uh, average response time. And the column that I want to pull the average from is uh, unit notified by dispatch to unit arrived on scene in minutes. Okay, so to set up this average, I don't have to do anything about the additional uh, options here at the end. I'm taking an average of my essentially response time and I've named it. So I'll go ahead and click Add. This new column is now part of my report. I can click Generate Report again, and we'll see how things look. It's remembered my filters from a moment ago. I'm still filtering to this year and to Region 8. Go ahead and click Generate Report. And here are the results. So let's take a look, uh, for example, here at this agency. We have the list of different dispatch complaints that they've been on, how many calls for each of those complaints, and then the average response time. So this looks like a very rural agency where uh, their average response time to breathing problem calls uh, has been 22 minutes. Uh, and for many of their dispatch complaints, uh, it's um, a larger response time like that. However, their calls uh, for falls, they've had six of those, and their response time on average to those calls has been 12 and a half minutes. Uh, so perhaps they're going to a lot of um, ground level falls at, uh, for example, a nursing home that's right in town close to the ambulance as opposed to other calls that are further out uh, from their location and take longer to get to. Also, it can be that some types of calls uh, are they're getting there quicker because of a higher urgency for that call. So I've taken an existing report, I ran it, then I went back to the columns tab and I added additional information that I wanted to see on the report. Let's say I like this report, I want to be able to use it again in the future. Um, I don't want to have to come back every time and find the dispatch complaint report and then make my modifications all over again and then run it. 
uh, I'd like to just have this ready to run uh, as it is. I can go up to the Actions menu, and I don't have a Save option because this is a report that someone else created that I cannot modify. However, I have a Save As option. So I can save this as my own report. I'll go ahead and click Save As. And I'm going to call it Dispatch Complaint with Average Response Time. I can update the description of that report to remind me what it's about. I can choose a folder to put the report in. I can also decide if I want to share the report with any other users in the system. I can look them up and share it with them. I'm going to just share it with no one. And click Save. Okay, and now it has saved my report. So if I look over here uh, on, in the menu, in the My Reports section, I can see that I have Dispatch Complaint with Average Response Time, uh, this report that I've saved as my own. Uh, so now I could log out of the system, log back in later, and the report that I saved would be there ready for me to run. Okay, so next, uh, let's create our own transactional report from scratch. Uh, I want to outline the sequence of steps that you'll want to go through to create your own transactional report. The first is, what's the question that you want to answer? And once you've figured that out, is there an existing report in the system that someone else has created that already answers that question? Or, that comes close to it, and maybe you would just need to make a few modifications like I did with the uh, dispatch complaint report. Then to uh, actually set up this report, you're going to go through several tabs in the report setup. We're going to walk through each of those today. You'll set up the columns that you want to show on your report, some display options, uh, how you want the data grouped, how you want it sorted, and finally the criteria that you want to apply to your report. <clears throat> so we're going to walk through these steps. Let's come up with an idea of a report we'd like to build. Well, let's take something to do with stroke. And we want to know when the stroke happened. And then we want to know uh, when the patient arrived at the hospital. So this would give us you know, how long had they had the stroke uh, by the time they got to the hospital. So first, I would ask, uh, is there any um, existing report that already answers or comes close to answering the question? Well, there is a report on strokes in the QAQI folder. I'm going to take a look at that report, because it may give us a handy starting point for some things. This report uh, would contain all kinds of information about patients who had strokes, blood glucose level, stroke scale, last known well date time, which would be uh, a great one to look at for um, how long they had the stroke. And in the criteria section, this report has been set up to look at certain primary impression codes. <clears throat> These are ICD-10 diagnosis codes. And so it's grabbing uh, those calls with a provider impression, ICD-10 codes of G45 and I63. Those are the ones for strokes, the ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes. This is also limiting down to uh, only those calls that were a 911 response to scene call. So it's cutting out the interfacility transfer calls. Now, in your report, you might want to see both. You want to see the patient coming into your hospital. You want to see them leaving your hospital as well. But this uh, report might give us a good starting point because it has these diagnosis codes for stroke uh, already put in here, so we don't have to go look them up in an ICD-10 site. So I'm going to take out the criteria about 911 response to scene. But I'm going to leave the other criteria in there. It's going to have a filter for unit notified by dispatch date time, so I can put in a time frame. And I'm going to add a region filter for performance reasons. And we're going to start over here now in the columns section and decide what we want on our report. 
Okay, so this report would tell us uh, the county, the name of the agency, the level of service of that agency, the incident number from that incident, date and time they were notified by dispatch to respond to the call, the age of the patient in years, primary impression, last known well date time, some vital signs including stroke scale and blood glucose, whether the stroke symptoms were resolved during the EMS call. If a stroke team activation was done, we'll have the date and time of that. Response time, how long it took to get to scene, how long they spent on scene, and how long they spent transporting, and then where they delivered the patient to. Uh, let's say, though, that we want to look, you know, from the last known well date time until they actually got the patient to your, to your hospital. We can see if there's a column that answers that question. There is. There's one that's patient last known well to patient arrive at destination in minutes. So I'm going to add that as a column on my report. If there wasn't an element already defined, I could create a column. And I can do something called a date difference. And I can enter, you know, my later date is when they arrived at destination. My earlier date is when they had the symptom on, or last known well. And then it'll calculate um, the number of, you know, minutes, for example, between those two date time values. So you can always do a, a manual calculation like that. But uh, this is nice. It's already an option in the data set. Okay. So this would give us our report. It would, it's going to be a detailed report, so it's going to list uh, one row for every um, stroke patient, and then we're going to see this information. Okay, let's see if we can generate the report. I'm going to go ahead and limit uh, down to um, last month for my uh, filter stuff. So that'll be looking at calls that happened um, last month. So I've clicked Generate Report, and we'll give this some time to load. OK. So we did find some uh, reports in three different MCAs uh, in these different agencies, and we see the information from each report here. Uh, I got some interesting data here. Working from the bottom up, uh, this one, it took 254 minutes from the time the stroke uh, happened to the time they arrived at the hospital. Um, so you know, and you could have put it in, in hours instead, um, but we're looking at, uh, what, just over four hours there for that one before they got to the hospital. The one in the middle here, it's blank. It looks like transport time is also blank. So this was a medical first response agency. They didn't transport the patient to a hospital. Uh, therefore, we don't know from their one report uh, how long it would have taken from onset to getting to the hospital. We do have the last known well date time. Uh, that was on April 10th at 5.30. And uh, we do see that they were notified to respond at 6.08, so about a half hour after the stroke onset. So that's good. Um, we also see that they took 12 minutes to get to scene and 30 minutes on scene. So we're now up to about an hour and a quarter from the time of onset till they left the scene. Then this top one. 11,102 minutes. <laughs> um, if we take a look at the data here, they were notified on April 1st. They said the last known well was March 25th, uh, over a week earlier. If they put in something like that, then yeah, you're going to get a really big uh, number for how long it took from last known well to arrive at destination. OK, so we played with columns and we played with criteria. There's a lot of other stuff that's already been set up in this report in display, grouping, and sorting. We're going to show you how that was set up. Uh, first, we can see here, um, when we look at display, we're going to notice 
these column headings have been uh, somewhat abbreviated compared to the actual data element that was picked. Except for my last one here that I just added, this really long label here. Well, we can change that. We can go to the Display tab. And we'll notice here, for example, uh, this one is just labeled MCA, agency, level, etc. This one, this last one that I added is really long. Um, so we could say um, minutes from last known well uh, to destination arrival. So something a little shorter for people to look at. So that's what the display tab does. We can change our column headings. We can also change how the information is displayed. So for example, dates can be displayed in various formats. Um, and same thing with last known well. This is going to be a number, but we can decide how many digits it has, uh, and whether it's left or right aligned, things like that. So that affects the formatting of each data element. The grouping tab. This report has previously been set up with some grouping levels. It has been grouped by county name, which is essentially MCA, uh, then by agency name, then by agency level of service. And then you get the list of records within um, that agency. So that's how that grouping is, is applying things. Uh, if we didn't have any groupings, then we would just get a list of patient care reports, and it would be a mix of EMS agencies. And so sometimes that's all you need. You don't care which agency brought the patient. You just want to see uh, all the reports. Other times, you like to look and really focus on an agency at a time. Uh, that's where something uh, like agency can be set up as a group by column. And finally, the sorting. So it will automatically be sorted by any of your groups that you select in the grouping tab, and then you can apply additional sorting on top of that. And this has one sort set up, which is unit notified by dispatch. So in other words, these reports will be sorted chronologically within each agency. But you could sort them by anything else uh, that you have on your report. We already looked at the criteria tab. And you may have noticed this criteria tab has two pieces. It has criteria and it has filters. Criteria are predefined in the report, pre-set up. So we want stroke calls every time this report runs. So this has already been set up with those ICD-10 diagnosis codes that represent strokes. Filters, on the other hand, just pick a data element that you want to have the opportunity to set up as criteria at the moment that you run the report. So that's why we have date range and region uh, in here so that at the moment we run the report we can pick what date range we want to run it on. If we could set up a date range criteria and if we did that you would never see that as a filter option. Instead it would, it would apply a specific date range that you had pre-set up that can be useful too because you can set up a date range for quote unquote last month. Well then whenever you run the report it's going to give you data on last month, whatever month that happens to be. There is also an additional options tab and this just affects um, some of the layout options uh, for the report like colors, um, whether you want headers and footers on your report, uh, how many records to show per page, that kind of stuff. And of course we could save our report through the actions menu. Lastly, once we have report results, you can also do an export uh, to PDF. You could export to CSV if you want to bring it into Excel and play with it from there. And there's some other export options as well. I encourage you to just uh, log into the system, go to Report Writer, and start playing around. As you do, then you'll start to build a report that might be close to what you're looking for, and you'll get the results and say, well, that's almost it. Then you can go back and tweak it uh, and keep refining it. If you're going to create a report from scratch, not using an existing report as a starting point, you'll do that 
by looking in this transactional report section here and choosing EMS incidents as your starting point. Occasionally you could use some of these others. For example, if you want to run a report about the agencies in your MCA, about agency info, like what level of service they are and type of service, things like that, then you can run a report using the agency information data set. Or if you want a list of all the people who work for the various agencies in your MCA, there's a personnel data set. But by and large, the EMS incidents data set is the, the data set you'll use to run reports on patient care report data from your agencies.